Let's uh, get some perspective on pharma. Surjit Pal, pharma analyst at Prabhuda Sthilathar is now joining us on a phone line. Mr. Pal, what is happening in the pharma sectors? What are clients telling you? See, I think uh, what's happening is uh, slowly and gradually uh, both uh, insti and non-institutional guys are getting out of the sector. And this restructuring is uh, taking place as more and more the other sector is getting promising return or giving the promise of better return. So the the, the allocation for pharma sector or defensive sector per se, I mean even other few to one or two, will be at a receiving end. And and I believe that this will continue to go on. Uh, because if you, if you go by valuation multiple and, and if you take the consensus number, I think consensus number has a lot of fraud. In a sense that we have a lot of uh, uh, un... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind of expectation which should not be there. Hello? Hello? Yeah. So... You know, just in terms of numbers, I mean, you know, we've only seen numbers from Glenmark, which was, of course, an exceptional. Then we saw a tarot number which came out. Do you think going into the earnings season, people are now expecting weak numbers or weak numbers are getting priced in by, by the market? It's not about Glenmark. I mean, tell me which pharma company has given good numbers still yet in this, in this uh, area. See, none of them. And, and, uh, and, and that is going to be the new normal. Given the kind of price competition, given the kind of uh, you know competitive uh, horizon is coming up in market like say U.S. in in, in India in terms of regulatory uh, interference too much into that, so I think I think overall scenario is not very very uh, you know supportive for the pharma sector, especially the generic guys. So so that gap. Premium, which these generic guys used to used to have, this be the this be the bigger guys, bigger generics in U.S. market or global market. I think that gap is going to be narrowed down over a period of time because more and more people start believing and buying the uh, buying the logic is that you know this 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 golden market or golden era of last 15, 17 years is no more with us. And, and so, so I think next two, three years, you will see it will normalize further. Right. Uh, just in terms of pharma, you know, whatever could go bad in terms of news flow uh, has already come in. So you've had issues with US FDA for a lot of companies. Pricing pressure in uh, US is now quite evident with some of the companies, especially that have uh, concentrated drug portfolio. In India, things have changed. So do you think whatever could uh, go wrong for the sector has now started to come in terms of news flow? Yeah, many. I mean, uh, the kind of uh, exclusivity you are receiving, um, so so that will be more competitive. Uh, limited competition will have a more uh, more generic entry. Uh, new approvals will be will be far and few uh, going forward. Continue to be so the scenario. Uh, so so what will happen is that you ha either you have a money to buy out uh, many brands over there to maintain your sales or to go down the drain in terms of both in growth in terms of in terms of your margin you will be definitely impacted see see the companies like Cicla. i mean they are guiding now 15 to 18 percent i mean this is this is really pathetic I mean, in, a, in a sense that when we are talking about large company large generic company and they are giving guidance of 15 to 18 percent you should understand that what is a ground scenario a ground scenario really really bad Right. Uh, just in terms of pharma, uh, you know, always there is this argument about valuation versus what it was trading earlier. But can you just tell us with the earnings outlook that you were saying or, you know, is getting uh, slightly bleaker plus the best if we assume in terms of margins is now behind for Indian pharma companies, those historical valuation multiples have no relevance? Yes, I think rather we look into that, uh, you know, comparable multiple yeah, of the generic companies in global market and we can also compare with the uh, you know, bigger pharma, what multiple they are getting. So if we are not able to provide the kind of at least PEG-wise, the kind of 15-20% kind of growth, we don't deserve that kind of 18 or 19 one-year forward kind of P. So, you know, you might be seeing P less because uh, the consensus estimate of earnings was much higher. I mean, you see the how this consensus estimate is ultimately adjusting to the lower level over a period of a year. 
So what it means is that you are basically inflate the numbers to begin the year and and slowly and gradually coming to the terms in terms of lower earnings at the end of the year. And it it is happening not for the one year. I mean, see the for last two three years. I mean, it has been happening continuously. Right. Uh, earlier, the market preference was that you know com- investors were looking at companies that had uh, you know great concentrated portfolios where there was price hikes, which was happening. You think the preference will now change to companies where concentration is less because pricing pressure is coming in? It was evident in Glenmark. It was evident in Taro numbers, which came out yesterday. So, do you think that that is something which now investors will focus on? Price rise now is a very much a, you know extinct entity. Uh, you know, once or twice or once of even something happens here and there, you just cannot build your earnings on that. Um, so, so rather than price raise, you should look into that how much price discount you can restrict. So that is a scenario we are entering growingly in our portfolio. So what will happen is that the guy with the bigger, bigger basket as well as they're getting into differential product or or getting into, you know, uh, patented product, they will have. But again, I mean, those things are basically alternative to the loss of sales, which I have been incurring for the last two years. And there is no clear path is that how much the, the product I'll be launching, what will be the success rate? I mean, if you go by the previous guy, like say Mile and Teva, those who have been launching specialty products, I don't think their specialty product portfolio is giving that kind of substantial revenue where they can boast of. Still, their basic source of top line growth is coming from acquisition. So, so, so that will be the future of the Indian companies too, if they want to be big. But the point is that the basic problem with the Teva Mylan or Watson with the Indian companies is that Indian companies are very much promoted to run. So whether these promoters will be ready to dilute the stake and they will be a professional company, that is a big question, uh, you know, lingering over over the sector. Right. Uh, and also, you know, if we just look at, uh, you know, these companies, now there was never this talk that what's happening to U.S. dollar and what can be the impact on these export companies. But now when, you know, there is pricing pressure, margins are going down, uh, the rupee movement will also lead to some EPS cuts for the sector? Yes. Of course. I mean, if, if, if Rufi goes up, um, you know, given the kind of competitive uh, scenario in this market, you really cannot push up your price. I mean, you don't have that kind of headroom either. So if if we as a country cannot manage our, our, our uh, you know, exchange rate, then, then this, this uh, export-driven sector of companies will be really, really in a bad scenario. Right. Uh, Mr. Paul, just your top picks in the pharma sector. If there is a decline from here on, what are the names that you like? You may, you, they, you know, they can still go down because there is extensive selling in the market in the pharma pack. But what are the names that you would like to buy if the markets go down? See, overall, um, I remain negative um, in, in, in the sector call. Uh, stock-wise, I believe if it goes down, Aurobindo could be a good pick. Um, then uh, Thyrocare could be a very good pick. Ipka could be a good pick. Um, so, so there, there you should you should keep your eyes on Lupin. If it comes, you know, more than twelve hundred below, you should put your money on. Um, even even Glenmore, the kind of a correction has happened. I think that a lot of emotional quotient works rather than the real reality or or the same uh, understanding of the business. I mean, of course, they have disappointed. But the kind of correction, I think, there is over time. Right. Uh, Mr. Paul, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always good to get a perspective from you. That was a view coming in on the pharma sector from Prabhudas Leeladhar.